Um, first item on our agenda, as always, is our public invited to be heard. First chance of the meeting. Would anyone like to speak? Please. Melinda, you know the rules, but for the record, if you can start with your name and address, you've got five minutes. Oh, and Levi will get the mic on. Red light. Thank you. Melinda Jordan, 1110 Twin Peaks Circle, Longmont. Um, just a little air show update. There's, it's been, everybody's kind of been doing their own stuff, and it's been a little bit quieter. Um, I had reported that we had the big meeting with St. Vrain Valley School District Innovation Center. That's still moving along. Um, we'll have some questions about their involvement that we'll address at our next meeting, um, specifically about drones, because that's a big part of their program. And I don't know if there's anywhere, any way we can uh, do anything with the drones, even inside the big hangar. It came up in the past, but I don't remember what the official word was. But, you know, they've got a huge drone program. And so, um, if nothing else, they'll be um, demonstrating uh, what they're using and their tools and their, their program for that. And then, so the next, the tentatively scheduled next air show meeting live will be January 20th, Saturday at 9, at either Levi's office in the conference table, or we'll see if we can go over to Public Works, but we'll aim to be over at the airport. I've got my request into Brianna to make sure she's available that day, but that seems to be the day that would work. We don't have a Super Bowl. We don't have any air shows. Pikes Peak Regional Air Shows tickets go on sale on the 30th. If you're thinking about going, it is worth it. It is an amazing show. That's in August, um, so really a cool one to go to, and you get a lot of ideas at that. Um, Malcolm was successful in getting a hold of the Longmont Police Explorers, so we finally got them engaged, and they'll know about the meeting. And now he's uh, he had a call back from the sheriff, so we're making everybody's making progress. And then this January meeting will really be the big come to the line. I'll have all the documents, everything lined up for people to start really reporting in and start uh, dialing in the details in the first quarter. Um, and the, within that, I noticed the green beacon while it was out, but Levi said he's working on it. Got mud on his boots, and that is all I've seen from Airport Road in my car. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Melinda. I wasn't going to call out Levi in his socks, but since you did, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> like I said, Tennessee style tonight. Anyone else like to speak at our first public invited to be heard? All right, seeing no one, I'll move on to approval of the November 2023 and our special <coughs> meeting minutes. Does anyone besides me have any revisions to the minutes? I'll go through mine then. All right, so I've got on meetings for November 9th, page one, line 21. Um, this is Melinda's comments. It's noted there as ALPA looking for a liaison. I don't think it was the pilot union. I think that was AOPA, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, AOPA. Um, that same one shows up on page three on line eight, two times on line eight as well in Bob Liner's comments. And then on page two of that same, um, same meeting, line 25, um, Harold, the city manager's name is misspelled, and I would just put his full name, Harold Dominguez, in the notes for um, making sure we're clear. And then for my November 28th special meeting, I have three misspellings on page two. Um, line 15, that should say that I proposed to put Malcolm in the number one spot, not purposed. Line 18, last word, should be applicants. And then line 21, last word, uh, name is misspelled. Mr. Salamatian. My last name is spelled, misspelled on line 19. Thank you. They make me want to go through every other time I see your name, but I figured you just did that. Does anyone else have any uh, other revisions to either of the minutes? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Vice Chair Dean. I will second that. Are you making the motion? Yeah, make the motion. Motion by Vice Chair Dean. Sorry. Is there a second? second? Seconded by Board Member Salamatian. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.
updates from the airport manager. All right. Levi. Updates. I'll go through these, I guess, one at a time, and then I'll pause for, for comment or question, I suppose. Um, first update I got for you guys, moving forward with doing uh, preparatory planning for 2024 projects. Um, probably going to get some engineer grant money projects moving forward. Right now, uh, wildlife fence definitely happening. Going to get that completed on the airfield finally, so that'd be great. Um, currently in the middle of assessing what we want to do with the pavement rehab project. Originally, I was planning on going on in 2024. It may still. Um, what we're assessing right now is cost, benefit of also looping in the rehab project on the uh, asphalt runway on the east side, that kind of connector. Um, not runway, uh, taxiway, I should say. Um, if we want to do those projects at the same time, we may have to push it off to 2025, or also, but we're currently seeing if we can just bump up that other project to get it done in 2024 along with the pavement rehab project. So literally just meeting with the engineers this morning and reassessing pavement out there to see how we want to, to combine those two projects to potentially make things more efficient, save money. Uh, so those are the two big engineering projects that are moving on um, at the field right now. Um, I guess I'll loop in all of the potential projects going on right now. Mentioned doing some uh, working on the beacon, also working um, trying to find some electricians willing to work on the airport signage light. We got a few signs out there that are out. It's not light bulbs, it's not electricity. It's looking like the signs are hitting age where the transformers are starting to go bad on them. Uh, so we got to figure out how to get those replaced out there. And kind of last project going on at the airport right now. Just last week had a conversation. Um, with an engineer to do a, an assessment of the master drainage for the south side of the airport. Um, that is going to be done to, so we have a clear picture of exactly what the city would require for any potential development on the south side of the airport. So we can tell people when they come in when built hangars what would be required. Um, or, so we as the city and the airport knows what needs to be required to be done so we can plan that project ourselves. That is ongoing right now. We had meetings last week with that. There was a site visit, and we're moving forward with kind of the discovery phase of, of it all, if you will. We're gathering documentation and seeing how that proceeds forward. Those are the projects on the airport right now. Are there any questions on any of those? Mr. Salamitian. Uh, you mentioned the south side. Um, there's lots of open area in the airport, like the west side as well. Um, would this drainage or potentially looking into development look at all the open areas or just the south side? It's uh, so the way that the drainage of the airport is kind of laid out, it's, it's really kind of naturally separated into north and south because of um, the runway and how things are divided and the flow and the slope of everything. The north side of the airport is pretty much kind of set, and the buildings that will be there and the drainage ponds that will be there, and it seems to be operating in a normal capacity. Um, the south side is kind of not set. There's no billing, so that's really the only focus point that we need to do because everything on the north side is working fine. Mr. Shook? Isn't there still issues with, uh, is his name McHenry? Uh, I know there's a hangar right next to me. What's his name? It's, oh, it's the, the hangar Doug Lyle's <coughs> in. That's kind of a separate. That's kind of a separate little project. I've been looping that one in with a pavement rehab project. Okay. So the drainage going down the ramp seems to be not draining into that field correctly on that connector that goes into the ramp all the way down to that drainage pond. Um, the public works crew was actually out there last week widening that, but we also did walk that with the engineers to see if when we do that pavement rehab, if that all needs to be widened to to decrease the backflow and the flooding in that area too. Um, that will be assessed as part of that pavement rehab project. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> um, I can't remember if I reported last time or not. We did have uh, did complete the survey on the airfield. We have a complete, nice six-page partial survey on the airport. So now it's very clear what's what on the airfield. All of that was pinned which means that when they did that survey, they took big giant chunks of rebar out there and, and pinned all the corners. So now if we need to go back with a metal detector, at least we have some chance of finding what they, they identified. So that's very nice. Uh, that was requested by uh, 
are in, uh, surveyors here at the city. Um, excited to have that. Our engineers are also excited to have that because they were essentially going to have to do that for these projects that we have coming forward next year anyway. So that's one thing we can check off our list for all of that. So that's really good. Um, any question on the survey? No. Mr. Shook. So did that survey uh, encompass every leasehold? Yeah, that was pretty much all the parcels on the airport. So that survey, I'm trying to think what it includes. It's pretty much a, it's, it doesn't have things like contours or drainage or anything like that. That's a separate, but that was essentially, if you will, like a property map. So it's all the parcels, everything like that. It also included, um, you know, all the exact locations of the corners. It included, you know, where the fence is, the property line, the airport proper, and then it had, um, an aspect of it which was a visual aspect so they marked all of the you know the the perimeter road et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and the difference between the gravel what was grass what's parking a lot was asphalt stuff like that so do you think that if a, a tenant came in and said i i believe my leasehold has more footage than it really does is that map going to be a good source for being able to identify the that square footage. It'll be pretty good. That map is kind of, if you will, the surveyors and their record searching, kind of their best knowledge of you know what everything was when they dug into it all. So that is kind of our overall lying master map, if you will. And more to the point, and the reason that we had it created was now moving forward, all parcel maps will come from that map. So not not only is it a good reference now, but it'll actually be the master we generate new maps from instead of just a google earth image image with a red block it'll actually come from the master map now all right um there is a uh an individual potentially interested in subleasing the hangar below my office i've been working with recently his name is mike hale he's interested in bringing a helicopter school to the area. He seems to be part of the remnants of what uh, have Heliops was down in KBJC. They, that company folded a while back, a couple months or so now. Um, he's moving forward with negotiating with Chuck on a sublease, and I've also been working with him to make sure he's, he's meeting the requirements that the city would request of him. Um, that's more of an informational thing. Um, yeah. Any questions on that potential business coming in? Okay. Uh, pavement rehab, sublease. Um, recently completed um, a review, complete review of airport leases. Um, that's something that interim manager Jeff Coleman began. Um, of course, as many of you know, when uh, David passed away, kind of left a void of information at the airport and stuff like that. Jeff Coleman did a whole lot of groundwork on that. One of the things he started at was uh, putting together all the information on the leases, date, dates of you know when they're due, stuff like that. Um, been working on that for about a year now. Had a heavy push of a, a really deep audit about the last two or three months. That's complete. We're getting some very, very good data, some very good spreadsheets now that are clean and usable. Uh, part of that, it, we did actually discover that there were some errors on some of the leases this year, um, and we will be sending out some corrections. Most of that is very small percentage points differences, but most of them, a lot of, quite a few tenants will be getting bills for, for little makeups on the leases. So due to errors that were created in that spreadsheet, there will be corrections going out to people. Um, any questions on that? Okay. The last thing I had kind of on here, and I guess this is more will be an uh, information or an action, action item for us later tonight, is just um, if you guys wanted to make a recommendation on the CPI stuff that we talked about last month. And that's all I have. Oh, I should make one more point, actually. I had a quick air show update also. I talked with Marika at the city and the communications team, and they put the air show also on their calendar to help potentially deconflict with anything else that's going on. And that's all I have. Promise. Thank you, Levi. Any any questions for Levi on his update? Mr. Shook. So CPI adjustment, I think I read something about the city wants to... 
uh, enact that the first part of the year. Yeah. But doesn't the CPI come out in like July? No, it actually it comes out in late October, the official number. So the kind of the idea is it comes out in, in late October. Instead of applying it in late October, uh, we essentially just give everyone, if you will, an extra two, three months grace period to sit on the old CPI and then just apply it the first of the year. So will you send out notices to people saying, you know, your rate is going to be this much so they're prepared? Well, actually, it'll save people money. Well, I understand that, but... Will you send out a notice to the tenants? Just, you know, I know I get a notice in California uh, on what the CPI oh, adjustment yeah. is. We every prior year. Prior to. Yeah. Yeah. We send out the information on the new CPI okay. whenever okay. we get it. Yeah. Yep. I can see what you're saying. And just on that, sorry, Malcolm, we'll get good. Um, the recommendation to change that policy only applies to new leases. Yeah, it's just new leases. Because existing leases. There's already nothing, have the timing built in yeah. to the lease, so we can't change it. And from a practical standpoint, there would be no point in trying to go back and change a massive amount of old no. leases okay. for any reason. I just yeah. want to make sure I understood, right? Yeah. So okay. I don't understand that. So in the current leases, there's a defined date when the CPI increase takes effect. And it's the anniversary of the lease, correct? Yes. What we're saying is going forward, any new leases, they would just have January 1 oh, okay. in yeah, every one of them. And that does a couple of main things. It first of all delays that increase for the person paying, and then it just makes the accounting massively easier on the part of the city. Yeah. Yep. But any current tenant has no change in policy yeah. until they get a new lease. Yep. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Dean. Quick question for Levi. Um, for the last snowstorm, what are we looking at for budget for snow removal so far? So far, um, I don't have those exact figures in front of me, but we're pretty good. We're not quite at the hitting the our planned you know ouch what if we get this much snow <laughs> so we're, we're looking good on that we actually had additional we had i think fourteen thousand dollars of extra money for mowing last year too so we're covered pretty well cool all right thank you yeah anything else on updates from the airport manager okay um absolutely Mr. so Shook. how is the new truck coming along with the plow and I haven't, I'm not there every day, but I haven't seen the um, skid steer and the snowblower doing any work. Yeah, the skid steer, well, we haven't had many snowstorms. We've no, actually I, had yeah, to get it I out understand. there. Um, interesting little update on that. I'm having a battery tender, hopefully, knock on wood, just send another reminder email to them they put on that so I can get it plugged in. Got a battery tender, already got a heat block, a heat block heater put onto it. I got a thermal coupling for that, so it'll switch on when it gets below like 40 degrees. So that so as soon as they get that updated, it'll be 100% ready to go with battery plus um, heater on it whenever we have a snowstorm. Yeah, I've been I've used it I think twice this year, um, and just to cover some small little piles from that first storm. Um, snowblower actually I haven't used yet. Haven't had had the call for it. Just been yeah. using the bucket and stuff like that. Yeah. What about the truck and the blade? Uh, the truck is still sitting with um, fleet. Unfortunately, it moves at the speed of what they can get things done to. If I recall correctly, last plot it was sitting, it needed, they were waiting on the, to get it in for an alignment on the front of it. Okay. All right. Call that the update. Okay. Um, we don't have any information items. There's nothing listed for action items, but as we discussed and as we talked about last time, uh, we did have that CPI language change. Um, it was in the minutes from last time, so it has been out there for the public. Um, given it's going forward new leases, I'd be comfortable making a recommendation on that, uh, but would open it up to the group if anyone would like to either wait on that or if you're comfortable acting or any further discussion. Would anyone like to make a motion then, since we already discussed a little bit of it? I'll make a motion. Vice Chair Dean. Make a motion for the CPI. Okay. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, Levi, you have a recommendation from us. It sounds good. Um, I don't know of any other action items and nothing listed. <clears throat> yeah. 
So, huh. hearing none, I'm going to then move on to our final public invited to be heard. <coughs> Would anybody like to come up and talk at our final public invited to be heard? Can you think of anything else? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seeing none, I will close final public invited to be heard. Board, council, and or staff comments. Well, board and or staff comments. Board members, comments. I'm good. So, yeah. Mr. Shook. Where are we at with uh, new board members? Oh. And I know Reiner's not here, so, but nothing was said, so I thought I'd bring that up. Excellent question. That was going to be my comment for the oh. evening. So, um, so Ryan had noticed earlier today that he was going to resign from the board. So we have one more open seat. Mm -hmm. um, council is has on their agenda to appoint new board members on at their Tuesday meeting. Um, last item on their agenda in practice, that's usually like 10, 1030, if anyone wants to be here to do that. Um, we don't know at this point if we'll be able to appoint in Reinhardt's seat or not, given how late it is. Um, so we do have, we had five applicants, right, Levi? We so had three yes. open seats before yes. today. Yep. And so we've made a recommendation to council from that special meeting um, of the three that we wanted. Mm -hmm. We provided a priority order beyond those three as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hopeful that council may just be able to appoint that last seat, so we have all seven. Uh, but we should at least, assuming council follows our recommendations, we should have five. Mm -hmm. Or six. At least six. six. Sorry. At minimum six. And then we can always ask what the... This is it kind of such a weird spot because it's happening all right, you know. Are we too late because technically we're past the time to get in or whatever? We can certainly ask and see what they can do. But there were five round. applicants. Why... So, so this is the question. To, yeah, that's the question. So, but we've already passed the deadline for the recommendation, and we recommended the top three. And on top of that, we, I'm sure we already passed the deadline for them determining what the openings were. So, can they even fill more than three seats yeah. in this go around? Yeah, and that, that part's my question. Since on their communication, it has the three seats. Yeah, you know, Malcolm's expiring seat, and then two others. Um, I plan to send a note to the city clerk tomorrow. Yeah. It doesn't or hurt later to tonight ask. and just say, yeah. hey, this is what's going on. We made our recommendations. We'd really encourage council to act. Yeah. And I'm happy to send that note to council directly as well. Nice. But I can't promise anything. You know, um, to that point, would anyone mind making a motion to direct me to send that to council so I can say we all voted on it and we all made it official? I'd make that motion. Moved. Seconded. I'll second second the vice chair. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. I'll send notes to city clerks and council. No promises, but I'll do my part. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would be nice to have seven. It would be really yeah. nice to have seven. Yeah. It would be nice not to worry about so much decorum and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. But I appreciate you all yeah. um, confirming on short notice and being here tonight. So thank you. Any yeah. other comments from board members? Levi, city staff comments? We're good. Okay. Then everybody, have a really wonderful holiday. Enjoy the rest of the year. We'll see you next year. Meeting's adjourned.